Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro and uh, yet another Commodore 64 repairs video. So I recently got this uh, really ugly uh, Commodore 64 and uh, a 1540 floppy disk drive. <laughs> Both are non-working. This doesn't uh, produce video at all. And I actually did some uh, basic measurements and I figured out that the 5 volt rail is uh, shorted. So uh, the fuse blows immediately. I tried with a new fuse, but uh, it just uh, went bust immediately. So uh, something is clearly not right with this. And uh, this one, yeah, it doesn't initialize and uh, it uh, doesn't take any commands. So uh, I guess we have to take a look at that too. I just want to take a moment here to thank my sponsor PCBWay. PCBWay is a manufacturer of uh, printed circuit boards uh, like these and uh, you can get uh, very high quality PCBs for as low as just uh, $5 for uh, 5 PCBs. If you need some PCBs like this uh, Commodore 64 motherboard replica then you can head over to pcbway.com and have them produce it. Or if you need some smaller PCBs like these, there's a lot already to choose from onto their shared project sites already. I recently got all these ROM adapters for the Commodore 64s and also other machines like the WIC-20. A little bit similar like these and I got these from PCBWay and I always enjoyed their quality and very fast delivery times. So it is spring here in the Arctic now and it's almost May and <laughs> Last weekend we actually had 15 degrees Celsius and uh, very nice weather. However, today and this week it's been all raining and snowing and uh, around zero degrees. So there's uh, still some opportunity to do some work inside. So I'm gonna start with uh, the machine and uh, yeah, it's very yellowed, <laughs> almost brown. Label is loose, quite dirty keyboard little scuff marks here and there. Uh, I think uh, yeah all three uh, fastenings uh, here are broken off and you can see underneath there's <laughs> the actual original gray color. <laughs> this is brown greenish. Oops yeah Remove the keyboard and uh, yeah, it actually looks all right inside. Uh, some dust, of course. <laughs> yeah, and there's no point in uh, trying to powering it up because then the fuse just blows. And I figured it was uh, short on the the five volts uh, regulator. If it is the regulator itself or something else I don't know we'll figure that out and after that we'll see if it works or not just gonna take it out of the case and make the case ready for some cleaning luckily all uh, the chips are here so uh, the machine is complete so there's two chips in socket uh, this uh, 6526 and uh, that is a CIA chip. It has a green socket and the SID chip is also in socket. Otherwise everything is soldered in uh, except for the VIC-2 that's in a socket too. Just gonna inspect, see if I can see anything wrong here. 
and there's a long black here. Backside looks uh, very nice. So this board is a 250, 425 and that's a very common revision of uh, the motherboard. And some of the differences between this revision and uh, older revisions is the RF shield. It's not a can, it's just soldered in. So this was a little bit cost reduced uh, revision and also the C chip and the PLA chip has uh, swapped uh, the position on the board. Before I start, I'm gonna remove uh, this uh, shield. Okay. There you go, it's off. So this is the 5 volt regulator, the 7805, and uh, it gets um, 12 volts unregulated in and uh, produces 5 volts out on this pin here. And I said that the 5 volt rail was um, shorted, but it's not correct. It's actually the input that is shorted, looks like. And uh, yeah, this 5 volt produces, uh, it's not the rail actually, it produces. Uh, 5 volt for the VIC-2 chip, but the other, most of the other chips gets 5 volts directly from the power supply. So we have a short between ground and the input. So there's a short between pin 1 and 3. And that is obviously not correct, so we need to figure out what causes that. It can of course be the voltage regulator that is gone, but this cap here is actually directly between uh, the input to the voltage regulator and ground and uh, yeah that seems to be shorted out as well. The others are not. So my suspicion is this cap is uh, gone. I'm gonna take it out, see if that uh, removes the short. So what do we got now? We still got the short. I know the short is gone on the cap, so uh, yeah, it wasn't that. So, okay, I'm gonna remove that voltage regulator and uh, take it out of the circuit and uh, check out uh, if there's any short in that. Yeah, this is screwed down uh, to this heatsink. Yeah, of course it has a little nut on the backside. Come on, you can do it. Okay. I'm gonna use the desoldering station to solder off this, but while I'm waiting for that to heat up, I'm just gonna clean up this very hard. <laughs> it's in fact solid now, almost. This heat compound. I just want to see what kind of chip this is, except being the WIC2. It's a 6569R3 from 86. Okay, out with the voltage regulator. That's out. Do we still have a short? Yes, we do. Still a short. So it was not the voltage regulator then. And now I measure on the regulator and it is uh, not shorted. Okay, I'm gonna replace this with a new one since I already got it out, but uh, first let's check a little bit more what could be shorting out this uh, board. I'm gonna take a look at the schematics and see what uh, that might be. Could be something simple. <laughs> if you take a look at the schematic, there isn't much going on. You get uh, the power in from uh, the input connector and then it goes via this bridge rectifier and uh, that's the ground going to pin 3, which is shorted out with pin 1. So there's these two capacitors there and the bridge rectifier itself. And of course there's something more up here, some diodes 
and you have the 7812, the 12 volt regulator, but that's not shorted out, so yeah, maybe it's the bridge rectifier then. So I'm gonna remove the rectifier and see if that releases the short. And that's uh, these four pins. And this is a bit hard to get out because it has very thick pins and uh, very large uh, copper planes around. We'll see how it goes. To make it a little bit easier, I'm gonna add some uh, flux and a um, little bit of a fresh solder. Yeah doesn't want to melt at all. <laughs> this one takes. I think I got the most of the solder out. Need to remove some uh, additional uh, solder tin. Okay, I think they're through at least. Just push them through the hole. There's no easy way to do this. <laughs> okay. Rectifier is out. Do we still have a short? <laughs> yeah, we still have a short. <laughs> so one more uh, component that is, sits between uh, the ground and the 5 volts is this one, C95. And uh, <laughs> I've never experienced that this can short out, but you never know. This is shorted uh, now in the circuit. Let's see now if I take it out. Do we still have a short? Yeah, still have a short. And this cap is fine. Okay, when uh, those components are good, then I have to start looking elsewhere. And uh, yeah, of course, the 9 volt uh, input unregulated is shorted to ground, but that 9 volt also goes elsewhere on the board, so it could be many other places and uh, so the plus 9 volt unregulated is uh, coming into the cassette port and that's the circuitry around here and it comes in on this resistor here or two yeah there's a short there as well that's a 470 ohm resistor the resistor itself yeah it's okay 470 ohms so it's not that. And it also goes into uh, this uh, transistor Q1. Is that shorted? Nope. It's not. The 9 volt gets converted to uh, a signal for uh, the cassette motor, I think. And there's a few uh, transistors and a couple of uh, diodes there. So I'm gonna check out that and take a look at the, the schematics and see what can be the issue there. If we take a look at the schematics, uh, we'll see that the 9 volts comes in here and goes uh, yeah, through this uh, transistor and uh, there's a diode CR2 Q4. So I want to check out uh, those. So I think I'm gonna take out the Q1 here. See if that is the culprit. Oh, that's out. Do we still have a short? <laughs> no, the short is gone. We found uh, the bastard. This transistor here, it's a D880. Alright, so I found uh, the problem and I'm now gonna clean up a little bit and uh, replace the parts I took out, obviously. <laughs> and then I'll see if I can find the transistor to replace.
I'm replacing the 7805 voltage regulator with a new one. Unfortunately, I have run out of uh, thermal paste, but uh, yeah, I have this silicone uh, adhesive that is uh, meant for heat sinks. Uh, so I'm going to apply a little bit of that just to make a good connection between uh, the voltage regulator and the heat sink. You can actually replace these uh, 7805 regulators with uh, more modern variants, uh, switching regulators that uh, run cool instead of these that are very hot and need heat sinks. Okay, now that the short is uh, gone, I'm inserting a new fuse. I only found that. 2 amps, so I think it should be 1.5 amps. I don't have that, so I'm using a 2 amp then. Let's power it up and see what we get now. Hopefully the fuse won't uh, blow and uh, we will find some uh, voltages that are correct. I guess this board will run just fine without uh, that transistor for the cassette motor. I'll replace that later. Now we have 12 volts in on the 9 volt uh, unregulated and uh, should have 5 volts there. Yeah, 5.1. Nice. Do we dare to uh, connect this up to the TV and see if it uh, actually works? <laughs> Let's see now. No signal. No nothing. So I think the board is correctly powered now. There's heat from the 5 volts regulator and the VIC2 chip is a little bit warm. Gonna try the dead test uh, cartridge. But still no signal, so uh, there's definitely something uh, more wrong with this uh, machine then. <laughs> so I replaced the VIC2 chip with another one, uh, let's see if uh, that helps. Nope, the week 2 gets uh, power, 5 volts, and uh, yeah, the CPU, yeah, 4.7, 4.8, so um, there is a voltage there. And look at that, <laughs> we are in basic and uh, the <laughs> there's obviously some uh, keyboard input going on. <laughs> So the bad con contact is obviously on uh, the video signal because if I let go then I would suppose that the machine would reset if um, it was a bad contact somewhere else. So you can see these uh, nasty looking uh, solder points for um, the RF modulator. Just gonna desolder it and uh, replace it. This modulator can be real painful to get out, so I had to use a little hot air, but uh, now it is uh, out. This is the new modern replacement modulator. Okay, new modulator in. Let's see now if it's uh, more stable. Oh yeah, look at that. Try to twist it a bit like I did before. Yeah. I'll say that this was a success so far. However, that the keyboard input, that doesn't look right. <laughs> Something is wrong here. I suspect maybe one of the CIA chips. We'll see about that. So I took out the, the CIA chip, the one in the socket. And yeah, look at that, <laughs> no more keyboard input, so it might be a bad CIA chip, it might be something else, but at least I'm gonna replace it and see if uh, it is that. I have a replacement part here, this is a <laughs> parts board, 
and it is a tip 29 and that should be equivalent I think. The replacement uh, transistor is in. Do we still have a short here? <laughs> no, the short is gone and we have a 1.5 volt voltage drop there. So that looks more normal then. <laughs> do I dare to turn it on now? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Yeah, look at that. That works. So I'm gonna test the cassette recorder uh, later on in this video. No. So I didn't record it, but uh, something crazy happened while the board was poured on. I just uh, put the, the screw back and uh, as soon as I screwed in <laughs> the nut on the back side, there were a spark and the, <laughs> the, the board went dead and the fuse blew. So uh, <laughs> that actually shorted out. So uh, now I took off uh, the nut and the screw here and uh, yeah a new fuse and now it's back to working again so uh, yeah I saw on the donor board that there were no screw there I don't think it's necessary I'm not really sure I'm not gonna put it back again because if I put the screw back then uh, the short comes back on the 9 volt uh, line so very strange all right back to the keyboard issue I have a replacement CIA chip here I'm gonna test with that already cleaned the socket so uh, yeah putting in this one I think it is working otherwise it would not have been in my Commodore pouch bin no that's not it <laughs> so something must be uh, given uh, some keyboard input to this so I'm gonna uh, yeah check out the schematics again and see if I can figure out what can be the issue here if we look at the schematics, we can see that the keyboard uh, connector, for the most part, just goes directly into uh, U1, the CIA chip. But uh, there are also some lines going from uh, yeah, the joystick ports, and uh, those are also connected uh, via this U28, the 4066. However, before I start diagnosing and um, yeah, maybe removing some chips, I'm gonna clean this board up. As you maybe can see, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, something looks like corrosion there and uh, yeah, dirt. Okay, so I took out the scope and I am uh, measuring uh, the pins on the keyboard connector and this text that comes like this is almost like if you use the joystick and it uh, actually sends uh, keyboard commands and <laughs> yeah that's uh, definitely looking uh, like that so there must be some activity on uh, maybe on the keyboard connector because it is connected uh, to some of the joystick pins. I'm gonna start on pin uh, 20. Yeah, it jumps up and down, pin 19, jumps a little bit up and down, 18 is uh, high all the time, 17, oh, look at that, it is floating around uh, just to 1 volt and uh, yeah, sometimes drops down to uh, zero, huh, strange. So, pin 17, there was something strange there. So it had nothing to do with the pin 17. I'm gonna try something else here. I'm gonna try and uh, short the pins uh, to ground by holding this wire to ground and see if that the keyboard input is stopping. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. So shorting pin 12 to uh, ground. I think it's 12, I need to count. Okay, so now we know that. Maybe. All right, it's uh, hard to tell what's actually the fault here, but I'm uh, gonna run the diagnostics uh, cartridge with uh, the full harness here, and we'll see what uh, that can tell us. Also inserted the SID chip, gonna test that. Okay. <laughs> 
So there's a lot of bad and uh, the seed is only playing some channels. <laughs> so both uh, CIA chips comes out as bad and uh, that makes me think that uh, there's actually something wrong with the other CIA chip and that affects uh, the first one because I replaced it with a good one. So I think my next step here would be to solder out this CIA chip and put it in a socket and try and swap them around. At least the RAM is okay and the CPU is okay and the ROMs are okay and the VIC-2 looks to be in very good shape. So, Or something might come from the PLA so maybe I'm gonna swap out that too. Okay, time to do some uh, desoldering, but first I'm gonna clean the whole uh, PCB on the back because it has some dirt, uh, some white spots here and there. And I found some spider web inside uh, there. <laughs> Before I do any uh, desoldering, I actually need to repair my desoldering uh, uh, <laughs> station or gun. You see the tip. It actually broke off uh, the tip, <laughs> probably due to uh, lots of usage and heat. So I got some replacement tips here, or uh, yeah, I think those came with a machine, but uh, or different sizes, and also it's a good time to replace uh, the filters. Oh yeah, that's dirty. And that's the filter, uh, <laughs> quite black. All right, ready to do some uh, desoldering. So it's always a little bit painful to get out those chips, uh, but uh, the CI chip came out, uh, yeah, relatively easily and no traces were uh, lifted. However, <laughs> the PLA chip is a different story and this is a little bit embarrassing and uh, yeah, it was uh, very hard to get out and uh, I used some uh, hot air, my hot air station and as you can see I had a little bit too much temperature and uh, got a little bit burnt there but uh, I think nothing is uh, damaged, just the color and I only has this uh, cheap uh, yeah, not very good uh, air station and uh, it's uh, difficult to control the temperature on it. So I'm just gonna clean up a little bit and then uh, in with some sockets. Uh, <laughs> I'll probably end up damaging the whole board. Sockets are in and hopefully I didn't burn those chips as well. <laughs> so let's check that the machine works as it did before I started with this mess. All right, still works as before. <laughs> so luckily I didn't uh, burn anything off there. So now I'm gonna swap uh, the CA chips. Okay, <laughs> now it says press play on tape. Okay, so swapping the CIA chips didn't uh, fix the problem, so uh, therefore I think it lies uh, elsewhere. Just to double check, I have uh, taken uh, two other CIA chips that are known to be good and uh, probably not gonna work, no. Still give some uh, keyboard presses and I also did try another PLA chip but it was still the same. So the mystery continues then. 